hospital and they take us into his room. His room. He's in a coma. He has the tube in his mouth. He actually, I'm, I look at him and I'm really afraid. And I start, oh, you know, the old things that the women do. What have they done to you and all of this? My husband said to me, don't do that because he can hear you. Even though he's in a coma, he can hear you. So we come out. Now we go to the wait part of it. And we get the hotel room and we go to the hotel room and every day we go to the hospital. My cousin in North Carolina, who is an evangelist, two of the uh, relatives here sent for her to come to pray. And she came and we would pray three times a day. And back and forth to the hospital. And the first day, I think, when I saw Shug, I was really... I didn't want to see him because they said, look, Shug got shot. I don't, can't see that. I don't see the shot. I see something, but it's not a shot. And Pac is in the, in his, in the isolation room, intensive care, and some of the death row uh, people, uh, the gangs really, were outside. and They were making sure that everybody couldn't come in because it was just because he's laying up in the hospital in the coma don't mean that people weren't clamoring. And reporters weren't um, um, using uh, uh, um, trickery to try to get in to see him and paying people off and all of that kind of stuff. So it, kind of it was, you know, but we would they, we would be in the family room and people, you know, we pray, we pray, we pray. So the last day, the day before, I had went in to see him. And when I went in to see him that day with my, my niece, it was all it was like I knew but I didn't know. You know, I looked at him and it reminded me of my mom when she was in a coma. So I cried real hard that day. And the next day we went, me and my sister went, and they had called, we went, then we went back, then they called and said to come. And when we got there, they told her that his kidney was failing, and they wanted to put him on dialysis before. It wasn't there yet, but they wanted to put him on dialysis. Okay. Then they come back and say that every time they tried to hook him up, his heart would fail. And, they, and my sister was not really hearing it. And they said it, kept saying it, and she said, what did you say? And he said, we did it, and we had to resuscitate him three times. And when she heard that, she said, don't do that. Don't do my, don't do my son like that. Leave him alone. Let him go. And I had, uh, Quincy's da daughter was there, and his mother was there. She had left earlier, going to Mexico to see a healer to get some medicine to come back to put on his tongue for his liver to help him preserve his liver some stuff and everybody was trying to help and when she she left and um, she had brought it back and I had it and I wanted to ask the doctor if I could go into the room my cousin the evangelist had been going in there all the time praying on him she put oil on him and she had put a healing cloth on him all of that stuff well this day when they said that my sister said don't do no more and I asked if I could go in the room before they pulled the plug and they told me no wait until they had uh, I guess cleaned them up I don't know I don't remember hearing it they just told me no when it was time they let me go in I went in with one of them this um, um, extended family member and just talk to him you know, talk to him and you know, fly away, go away, you know, pay for I don't know how I did it. I don't know how we did it when we came out. And then when we come when I come out, my sister now has to I don't know how she did it. She has to gather us and say, Let's get out of here. And we have to find a route out which they the security people have to us when we back. Um, 